Welcome back to the video for experiment 15. This video will cover the last two portions of the experiment. Part C covers the oxidation of alcohols. Uh, recall from the lecture uh, or my lecture videos that uh, when we say a compound is oxidized in organic chemistry, we mean that the number of carbon oxygen bonds in the compound increases and or, so it can be both or just one, the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds decreases. So that's ultimately what we're looking for there. Uh, the chemical that we use to cause the compound to become oxidized is called the oxidizing agent. I know that can be kind of confusing in terms of terminology, but just think about the word agent as meaning helper, just like a travel agent is someone who helps you to travel. An oxidizing agent helps your compound to become oxidized. And there are many chemicals that will do that. For example, hydrogen peroxide, which we've used, potassium permanganate is a good oxidizing agent. Um, but we're just going to be very generic here and instead write uh, the letter O in square brackets. And that just stands for an oxidizing agent. Uh, in this experiment, we are specifically going to use a solution of chromate ion. And if you'll recall in the textbook, the textbook talks about potassium dichromate. Uh, both of these will have essentially the same effect. So for us, we're just using chromate ion in the lab because it's easier to um, access and prepare. Now the chromate solution is said to have an orange color. To me, it looks more of a red orange, but I'm colorblind, so you probably don't want to take my word for that. And so whenever it reacts with an alcohol, the chromate ion changes into uh, the chromium-3 ion. And it turns out the chromium-3 ion, under the circumstances, is green. And so what you're looking for here is not a change in the alcohol, but a change uh, in the chromium reagent. If you see a change there, then you know our reaction has occurred. If, on the other hand, you add the chromate solution to something which cannot react with it, then the chromate solution doesn't change. It stays orange. And so that tells us nothing has happened. There's no reaction that has taken place. So primary alcohols are oxidized to aldehydes. Uh, now, technically, the aldehyde then continues to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid, although the lab manual doesn't really mention that. So let's look at our primary alcohol here. So we've got a carbon bonded to two hydrogens, and one carbon-containing group is what the R is understood to stand for. We're reacting it with uh, the chromate ion. And the way to think about what's going on here is this carbon loses a hydrogen, this oxygen loses its hydrogen, and we've put a double bond in its place. That's how you want to visualize these kinds of reactions, and you won't go wrong if you remember to do it that way. So you lose a hydrogen from either side of the bond and form a double bond there in its place. So you're increasing the number of bonds to oxygen. And so clearly that leaves this carbon with only one hydrogen, and that gives us an aldehyde. In the process, the chromate ion changes from orange to the chromium-3 ion, which is green. Secondary alcohols become oxidized into ketones by the chromate ion. Again, if we look at the structure here, first of all, this is a secondary alcohol because the carbon is bonded to two other carbons. And very importantly, it has one hydrogen. Uh, so we lose the one hydrogen here and the hydrogen on oxygen, and we replace them with a double bond, and that gives you a ketone. So it's the same molecule here, just turned on its side with the double bond. And in the process, the chromate ion again uh, is changed to the chromium-3 ion, so you'll see a color change. Now the chromate ion is not able to oxidize tertiary alcohols, and the best reason as to why that is the case is that the carbon does not possess a hydrogen. Uh, think about this. The secondary alcohol 
had a hydrogen. So you could lose this hydrogen and you could lose the hydrogen on the hydroxyl group, make a double bond. You've got a ketone, that should make sense. But there's no hydrogen to lose here. And if there's no hydrogen to lose on this side, then there's really no way for this uh, compound to undergo oxidation. And so, in fact, uh, since there's no reaction, there can be no color change with the chromate ion, and so it simply remains orange. Now, an important note, phenol, which could arbitrarily be described as a secondary alcohol, uh, because it's bonded to, the carbon is bonded to two carbons, or you might think of it as a tertiary alcohol because it's bonded to no hydrogens. Uh, it turns out that phenols will be oxidized by chromate, uh, but they're oxidized into species uh, that we haven't really discussed. And so I'm not going to really get into the details of them. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to say it's a ketone or that it's some other kind of group like that. Uh, the chemistry of the phenols goes beyond what we discuss in this course. Part D involves a test which is specific for identifying phenols, and that is the iron 3 chloride test. It turns out that phenols form uh, what is called a complex ion in the presence of iron 3 ions. Uh, that is essentially a type of species where different phenols clump together around the iron 3 ion, and I'm not going to go any more into specifics as to what the complex ion looks like than that. Uh, but suffice to say that when iron 3 is alone by itself and has nothing to uh, form a complex with, it should be yellow in solution. And since the other alcohols that we studied cannot form the complex, adding iron 3 to them uh, causes no change. The solution simply remains yellow. However, we will notice a very distinct color change to purple when we add phenol to that compound. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results of the reactions for Part C and for Part D. Here is a picture of all five alcohols and the phenol. You'll notice the phenol is the only one with a color to it. And this is the orange chromate solution. Here is a result of adding the chromate solution to ethanol, to propanol, and to methyl, to propanol, going from left to right. And here is the result of adding it again to 2-methyl-2-propanol, that's the same test tube, and then cyclohexanol, and then finally phenol. Here's the iron 3 chloride test. So here is the yellow iron 3 chloride reagent. And as before, we've added it to the three test tubes, ethanol, 2-propanol, and 2-methyl-2-propanol. The test tube on the left should look essentially the same color as the other two. Uh, again, there's 2-methyl-2-propanol, cyclohexanol, and finally phenol. And this brings uh, experiment 15 to a conclusion. Thank you.